Hey, 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 what are you doing? It's Themac and about last night. Well, it was a um, interesting weekend to say the least. Uh, overall, really positive for the local teams and for your boy Dmac. Not so great. I will get to the details of the bike being stolen, which was a bummer later on in the podcast. Um, I will get there. Um, we'll also go into the avalanche. Do they possibly, I mean, possibly have a goalie controversy? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, maybe. Also, Nicole Jokic loves the big fella. And, um, yeah, I mean, big guys like big guys, right? Also, we have the final four that is said and all sorts of stuff to get into. But first, we want to thank Ed Prather Real Estate, the number one real estate team in Colorado. Ed will sell your home guaranteed, and with the rates hopefully coming down in June, couldn't be a better time to get with Ed Prather and his team at edprather.com. Yeah, today is a gargantuan day in our lives as we close, we sign paperwork to close on the sell side of things, and we should be closing on the buy side of things on Friday. And there has been a long process, and thank God for Ed and his team, and thank God for my wife too, let me tell you. She is so sharp with basically everything. And her, I, I have learned significantly to stay in my lane. And uh, thank you. Thank you to, thank God she's working with Ed Prather closer than, than I am. That's for sure. But it's a heck of a team. And I just never thought. Oh my goodness. You know, I just never thought that this would um happen. Um, although there's really been no sort of appreciate Ed and everybody um for helping us out and getting things done. And uh Man, it's exciting. So big, big news today. But let's get on to uh, your teams from last night. And we're going to start with Nikola Jokic. Now, the Nuggets won last night 130 to 101 over a pretty good uh, Cavs team. A really good Cavs team, actually. A Cavs team who's 45 and 30. Uh, 21 and 16 now on the road. So above a 500 team on the road and the Nuggets crushed them before the game. Michael Malone did acknowledge. I gotta take the blinders off. I gotta stay focused on what matters and that's being healthy going into the postseason. So Jamal Murray has missed a bunch of games at this point. And I don't know if he'll play on Tuesday. There's part of me that wonders if Jamal Murray with seven games left in the season would play the rest of the year um, instead of, you know, just using this time to get healthy because we know what they're like when, when they're healthy. And that is by far the most important thing. But Malone said Jokic in particular, after a two game skid just was all fired up in the locker room, in the huddles, just more fired up a little bit than usual. And boy, did he have a huge game. 26 points, 18 rebounds, 16 assists. And after the game was over, we waited a long time for Jokic to come out. But Jokic was watching a college basketball player, uh, DJ Burns, the big fella for North Carolina State. I think he's so skilled, especially lefty. I love to be lefty. And it like, seems like the teammates like to play with him, so... Got to be a good guy. So Jokic is watching a college. So, the, you know, what a cool moment for DJ Burns. 
you want to talk about uh, it's awesome your team reaches the final first final four since Jim Valvano days and you're beating Duke and I mean you're pretty fired up obviously I mean that's incredible now you play Purdue and and then you have the best player in the world say he digs you he's into your game he he made us muggles just kind of wait for you you know it's a good moment Jokic was in a good mood. Everybody was in a good mood. Um, when you're playing well and loose and relaxed, and they shot unreal from um, beyond the arc. It was crazy how good they were. Uh, 63.6% is where they finished out. But for the vast majority of the game, they were shooting over 70% from three. Let me just read you some of these numbers here. Um, Aaron Gordon, one of three. Michael, this is all from three. Michael Porter Jr., three of five. Jokic, one of two. Reggie Jackson, five of five. KCP, six of nine. Wow. Hunter Tyson hit his only three. Uh, Holiday, one of three. Uh, Jalen Pickett hit a three-pointer. Christian Brown was two of three. 21 of 33 from three. I mean, absolutely outstanding. And they played tough defense. They just, and this was a Cavs team that beat them up in Cleveland back in November. This is a good Cleveland team. It just goes to show when the Nuggets play what they're capable of playing. I mean, they're obviously what I'm saying and the best team on earth. So they stop a two game skid. They shoot lights out. Um, everybody was in a good mood. And then at the end of the game, Colin Gillespie gets in, has a breakaway and sort of dunks. The bench went absolutely crazy. Now Colin's a, it's a wee fella basketball terms. It'd be six feet, maybe. And, uh, the, the press conference was so loose. And this is where I get punked a little bit. Uh, here is Michael Malone. Asking Scott Hastings for the last question. And stick around to the end when your boy uh, gets humiliated a little bit. Scott. Uh, Well, we just had the debate in the locker room. And uh, somebody said it's a KCP dunk. Uh, But I asked Colin straight up and Colin says, no, man, that's not a dunk. So I think he maybe thinks he has a little bit more bounce in those legs than we all think he does. But. Um, it's always great when guys like Colin, Jalen Pickett knocks down two threes, Hunter Tyson, whose nickname is I've never seen a shot I don't like. Those guys come in the game and they, they get a chance to play, man. And they work so hard and the chances aren't always given to them. Uh, but, you know, I, lo- I love seeing the way all of our guys play tonight, including the guys that close that game out because they deserve success as well because they work very hard. Sorry, that was the last question. <laughs> Yeah, happy Easter. All right, having a little expense. That's your boy, D-Mac. Okay, it's fine. I can take it. No big deal. My question was going to be, so you think he was, you're confirming he was trying to dunk. But whatever. Doesn't matter. Malone got the walk. He loves walk-off moments. He loves having the walk-off press conference moments, and he got a great one there. So happy Easter, Coach. Everybody in a great mood. Here is um, um, Reggie Jackson, five of five from three. And he said, you know, I just, it helped being encouraged by his teammates just to shoot, to not worry so much about it. You got an open shot, shoot it. So he was draining his shots. Good for him. Even Jokic said he needs that reminder every once in a while, too. And here's uh, Reggie supporting Colin Gillespie. You seen him? He was flying. Like, my boy was up there, so we was super hyped. Trust me, um, he might have to get a gift or something for that. I mean, we're gonna, he might have to hang on the rim next time. He might have to pay the tech for him. I mean... It's a rare occasion, so the next dunk he gets, if it's two-hand, I might have to uh, let him know in advance. I'll just hang on the rim. I might have to pay that tech for you. 
All right. Really. Oh, and uh, shout out Colin definitely with the dunk. He proved that uh, our point guards, between Jamal, him, Jalen Pick, and myself, we definitely are the most athletic position on the team. <laughs> See what a good mood everybody was in. We're goofing around Colin Gillespie and college basketball players. And, well, I took some shrapnel on that one, too. But that is a looser, more relaxed team than, I mean, it was so uptight against Minnesota, and they did not play well. It was, a, a you know, a stinky loss against the Sun. So you snap the two-game streak. You're in good shape. And in terms of where you stand, well, let's go through it. Uh, first of all, we'll look at the scores yesterday in the NBA. Besides the Nuggets win, the Lakers beat the Nets 116-104. Clippers over the uh, Hornets 130-118. Sixers beat the Raptors 135-120. Heat over the Wizards 119-107. Thunder did win. Oh, man. 113-112 with a big fourth quarter to beat the Knicks. Mavs beat the Rockets 125-107. Bulls over the Timberwolves. That's good, 109-101. Warriors beat the Spurs. Spurs will be in town tomorrow, 117-113. to And Kings over the Jazz, 127-106. So, in terms of the standings, a little help there with Minnesota losing. The Nuggets find themselves a half game behind Oklahoma City and a half game ahead of Minnesota. But Minnesota has a game in hand to the Nuggets. And let me do some quick math here. 74, 75. And Oklahoma City has a game in hand to the Nuggets too. So with the win, it's good for the Nuggets. But if everything evens up, if Minnesota and Oklahoma City win their next games, um, Denver would technically be in third place. So you just kind of hang in there. Seven games left. No need to do anything crazy. They're crushing it since the All-Star break. They're seven and three in their last 10. They're doing great. And San Antonio is a, a tricky team. I know they're in last place in the Western Conference, but there's some crazy stuff going on with Wembayama. Still, it's a game overall the Nuggets should be able to handle and wrap up this homestand. They do not have a demanding schedule the rest of the way. There's a couple of one-offs. There is a back-to-back -back coming up, but it's seven games to go, and it's going to go right down to the wire. So I think they need to be in a mindset of whatever happens, happens. We're not going to do something extraordinary. We're not going to put anybody at risk. We're just going to play. Jokic says he's used to dealing KCP so hot from three, which is amazing. It was nice to get the, the the break from without Jamal, although they miss him. Can't win without him. Cannot win without him. Everybody knows it. But you beat a good team easily at home, and that always feels good. About last night, when it comes to your Colorado Avalanche, first of all, McKinnon's streak stopped. We, we start there. That ended so now how do you bounce back the avalanche were playing a really good nashville team and they won seven to four mckinnon had a four point night um he has 127 points he's 12 points short of peter stasny's record with eight games to go so it is within reach that he could beat the entire oregon he already has the avalanche record but he could beat the entire organization's record. Meanwhile, you have Miko Rantanen, who has 100 points and is one goal short of 40. So on paper, the Avalanche are playing great. After the 7-4 win, now they're down 4-2, to and they pull Ananen and score, or they pull uh, Georgiev. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but let's just talk about the streak. And McKinnon admitted to me that, Perhaps it's a bit of a relief that the streak is over. Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, I get asked about it a lot. I was kind of getting tired of talking about it. Um, 
but I get it. It, it was a cool run, a uh, very fortunate run, um, but kind of indifferent. Obviously, I want to produce up the team win, but um, yeah, it just didn't happen last game. So I was due for one of those. I was getting a lot of good bounces all, all, year, all season. All right, puck luck is a real thing. <coughs> Meanwhile, you have to understand, Georgiev gave up four goals against the Penguins and Bednar left him in. Gives up four goals against Nashville and Bednar pulls him out. The difference? He's got feeling. Yeah. I, I just thought he wasn't sharp, so decided to make the change. That's part of it. Yeah, what Bednar is talking. And that's after a win. So you see what Malone and the Nuggets were like after win. That's what the Avs were like after a win. And, and a pretty convincing win, 7-4. to four. But you do wonder if there's some goalie controversy. So after allowing his fourth goal, Yuryev put his stick one hand into the net for the puck and just flip the puck, just get it out of the net. Well, the puck goes into the stands. And he takes a two-minute unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. He didn't get thrown out of the game. He was benched because the coaches pulled him out. Meanwhile, you have Annan playing really well. Okay, so what are we looking at here? And that led to some, you know, good, honest questions at the end of Jared Bednar's press conference about the goalie situation. So first up is just the mental approach of, of Georgie. And then, well, is there doubt about who will start in the playoffs? I don't know. You have to ask him. It's a question for Gorgie. It's, it's getting high. You know, he's played really well for us. So, I mean, he keeps having starts like that and playing like that. The, the confidence is growing every day. Are there decisions that need to be made before the playoffs when it comes to starting the playoffs? No. Good. All right. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Woo! You can feel the chill a little bit, right? Okay. We'll see. Georgie's the man. Um, but they're not. I think they'll be much quicker. I don't think they're going to mess around. If it ain't going their way, I, I I think they'll be quick to pull Georgie. Now, Georgie has played brilliantly. It's an all-star. Uh, he's got the most wins in the NHL, but he has these little meltdowns. So, Eustace has to stay right. ready. So, the rest, the rest of the guys and uh, do your own job. Are there words exchanged between you and Georgiev during the switch? Well, I, we didn't have time. I were trying to put my uh, steals on the good shape, so I couldn't, couldn't say anything for him. Obviously, uh, getting a wave of goals was important, but so was shutting it down defensively. How did you guys manage to uh, close the door there? Well, real well, I think I think they got well, a couple of bounces in the first and scored goals, and uh, then uh, when I jump, jump in into the net, we uh, we deepened real well, so, like the rest of the game. So, uh, so yeah. yeah, we did a very good job there. Is there any way to prepare for coming in cold like that, or is it mostly mental? Well, it's gonna be ready, you know. Like it's trying to kind of hard to. Well, you're always cold when you jump in, so it's gonna it's kind of like mental because you're gonna jump in and trust yourself and do your best. Okay. So you can see it's just two different vibes from teams in you know similar situations. But the puck luck was on the outside, side, right, Kale? Yeah, just a couple things happened. It was just a weird game um, in terms of all that. But, um, yeah, I was, I was just saying that kind of uh, a couple of missed calls and a little bit of karma there. So a little bit of good good fortune, fortunately. The last one, guys. Okay. The Avalanche are in, um, well, the Avs now are officially in third place in the Western Conference. They are tied with Vancouver, but they lose the tiebreaker to them for some reason. I'm going to guess conference wins, but I don't know. So I'm looking at the standings. They're, they're tied. 
The Avs have more wins, but they've got Vancouver. I don't even know why. I'll assume it's head-to-head or conference win, something like that. Avs are playing great, though. Avs are playing great overall. Um, and Dallas has 103 points, but both Vancouver and the Avs have a game in hand to the Stars. So there's wiggle room there. The Jets have fallen back, as expected, a little bit. And Edmonton is... Um, there's still three games in hand to Dallas. So they could jump two games in hand to the Az and Canucks. And Edmonton is on this road trip. So they play Columbus, who is the worst team in the Eastern Conference with 60 points. Same games played as the Avs, 40 points less. This is this is kind of a weird must-win game for the Avalanche tonight. We'll um, have five to go. We have a bunch of stuff going on today. We'll have a first period watch long at Avid Caddy, 9556 Park Meadows Drive in Lone Tree, where we're signing people up for our watch party for the national championship game. That should be amazing. All you have to do is go to avidcaddy.com slash DMAC. Sign up. We'd love to have you there. Food, drink, hoops, golf. Should be a great night to watch the national championship game and a great chance to see um, all the folks there at Avid Caddy. So that's going on now, and we'll be out at Avid Caddy starting at 4.30. The Avs start at 5, so we'll have a first period watch long as that gets going. Then we'll have 5 to go around 7.15 or so, last five minutes of the Avs game for reaction to the game and post game as well. We'll talk NFL. And the Broncos with Nate and Chad coming up here in just a little bit. All right. So scoreboard for the NHL last night. Just one game. Canucks beat the Ducks 3-2. to two, So there's that. About last night when it comes to your Colorado Rockies, they lose to the Diamondbacks 5-1. to one. They're 1-3. One in three. So far um, on the season. So they did win the game on Saturday, but they've lost three out of four games. And they now, um, and you know, the Dimebacks are good. They played in the World Series last year. So the Rockies lost five to one, seven to three, and 16 to one while winning nine and four. Lambert actually gets the win. Good for him. They are in Chicago. Um, at 12:20, so we have a very early Rockies game today, and then they play Tuesday and Wednesday, day off Thursday, and opening day against Tampa on Friday at Coors Field. So we'll see how they do against the Cubs. And uh, I can't stand the Cubs, and I can't stand Cubs fans. Um, so I hope they beat the Cubs. But obviously, not a great start to the season as the Rockies um, get outscored well by a lot unfortunately. So in terms of, geez, should I even look at the standings? Is that even fair? We look at the standings for the Rockies and the National League, and they are in last place. They're one and three. San Fran's two and two. Padres three and three. Dodgers four and two. And of course, the Diamondbacks, because they played the Rockies, are three and one. So the Rockies are in last place. Thank God for the Astros at 0 and 4. The Marlins at 0 and 4. Cardinals at one and three, and the Cubs are only one and two. So we're just in the beginning stages of the season. We shall see where it goes. The bike. <coughs> ah, this is a bummer beyond belief. So, um, on Saturday, it was a four o'clock game for the. I'm just trying to get a photo of my bike. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What do I want? So I'll do this one. All right. So it was a four o'clock game for the Avalanche on Saturday. And it was a beautiful day. Absolutely gorgeous. And I've lost a bunch of weight, okay? 
So I'm feeling pretty awesome these days, physically. And just to be outside and ride that bike on the Cherry Creek Trail, which is an 18-mile push from my house downtown. But it's it's like there's one little uphill area around um, Kennedy Golf Course. But the rest of the ride, basically downtown, is more or less slow, gradual downtown, Cherry Creek Path, meaning you can really push hard. You can get a real fun fast you can do i can do 18 miles in less than an hour it's crazy um going home the other way is a little bit different there's a employee entrance with a bike rack that is very seldomly used but it's right near the employee entrance and i've locked my bike there kind of on purpose because it's just kind of out of the way you really wouldn't put your eyes on the bike there and I had a, uh, um, like a cord lock, you know, it was like a combination. And so I did not have a U lock. Okay. Never mind two U locks, but I've been using this combo combination cord lock literally for years, years. And I've locked my bike in that spot outside of ball arena at least a dozen times. <coughs> Excuse me. This is this is my bike right there. Uh, let's see. Is it better if I go like that? I uh, know it's kind of hard to see like that. Anyways, that's my baby. And um gone when I got back from the game. Eight o'clock. Not that late at night. Game started for Finished everything up, done by eight, no bike. And it's devastating, devastating. Uh, reported it to the police, reported it to Ball Arena Security. Um, did, went to bikeindex.com. Um, hey, I'm, I'm wearing some Trek stuff today because I'm a Trek guy. I have been for years. My guy, Chris, at Trek uh, Boulder Bicycle, Trek Bicycle Boulder. What do you guys call yourselves? It's Trek Bicycle and Boulder in the names. And Isaac up at um, Trek Highlands Ranch Bicycle have been great. But Chris in particular has been amazing over the years. And I reached out and he gave me some advice on trying to report it. Um, but it's, it's, what can I tell you? Um, I have a very deep emotional connection to that bike in particular. Um, it's a, you feel violated, you feel upset, depressed. Um, the concept that I just can't go and jump on that bike. And I try to ride my bike as much as humanly possible every day in my life. If there is an option, if there's any way throughout the course of the day, I can just be on my bike compared to driving, I'll always, always take my bike. And being in better shape, um, you know, and the weather getting nicer and it's tough, man. It's tough. So I'm, I'm not totally giving up. I mean, maybe there's a chance. I've put it out there on social media. Um, I'll put it out there right now. There it is. So it's a Trek bike. It's, it's got some cool components to it, electronic shifting and ah, I miss it. Miss it. It's hundreds and hundreds. I mean, hundreds of miles. Hundreds of hours over the years through the pandemic. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Kept it in great shape. Nothing wrong with it. Just, you know, just like people. Parts get worn down a little bit. You just got to replace them. So no, no desire on my part whatsoever to, like, get a new bike um, in terms of getting rid of that. None. Just, just gone. 
gone. So I know this is kind of a bummer to wrap the podcast up on. Um, Don't even know what else to say. I mean, it's as simple as that. I took it to the game, locked it up, put it in a spot that I thought it was safe. I guess I didn't use a good enough lock, but I have locked that bike up with that lock a hundred times outside, and it's been just fine. Except for Saturday. Devastating. Um, So, it's just a thing. It's not a person. Uh, I know that, so I don't want to get too wrapped up into it. But it was, well, for me personally, it it was just, it meant a lot to me personally. Oh, my God. So, stop it. BMAC, Darren. That's it. I guess I guess there really isn't more, much more to say. It's uh, I had a d- deep emotional connection to that particular bike. Um, most people have been extremely kind, and they understand. Um, a lot of people have been through that same sort of situation. Uh, and for the record, it's the third time that I've had a bike stolen. One, I had a mountain bike that my son was using uh, back in high school. We have a Jimmy John's a mile down the road, and he was locking his bike um, to a bike rack outside of King Supers near the Jimmy John's. That got stolen out in Centennial. That's where I live in the suburbs. I, my younger son, by accident, left the garage door open. I had a Pinarello, which was a beautiful bike, too. And that got stolen out of my garage in the suburbs. And now I've had my Trek bicycle um, stolen, um, you know, downtown. So, strangely, politics got into this mix. Um, It's the third time I've had a bike stolen. Once right out of my house. Once downtown. The other time locked up in the suburbs. Sucks. So, uh, yeah. I, I... I'm up for suggestions if anybody has any ideas of what to do, but I, I, I'm pretty much resigned to the fact that it ain't happening. I, I mean, I don't know. I, it'd be amazing to get it back. It'd be unreal. Uh, but at this point, it'd basically be unreal. So, so there you go. The bike story. That's where we're at. All right, D Mac Smack, D Mac Smack. I'll start at the bottom because I just uh, did all this stuff. Uh, we go here. Time to put Dan Tanner's bike to use. Yes, that is funny. Um, Andon, gone chipping in. Oh, well, that's a a thank you, Andon. I appreciate that. Uh, first of all, um, any kind of Money absolutely helps the channel and what we're trying to do here. Um, and my guy, Brent, replacement bike fund. That is super nice. Thank you, guys. You know how much I, I love and appreciate everybody who watches this channel. Um, people steal wherever and whatever affiliation you are. That sucks. Yeah, I agree. Oh, my guys. Come on. On to the next bike. Sorry to hear. All too familiar feeling. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate it. That's incredibly generous. Um, let's get some other comments here. Is it just me or does Jokic look gassed? Gas- is that what you meant? Um, no, he's he's good. I mean, he's dealing with stuff. It's tiring the season, but Malone's managing the time the best they can. Yeah, he's. I mean, they're all a little bit tired at this point. But don't forget, the Nuggets will avoid the play-in, so they, they'll get, like, six days off. I mean, just, they get essentially a bye week after, and they have seven games left, and they have been at home for uh, a solid chunk of time. So it's not that bad. D, ask them to check the cameras for your bike. I have done that. It's great advice. I've done it. 
And tomorrow when I go to the game, they said they'll need some time to pull it, I guess. Uh, but I should see who stole my bike tomorrow. There are cameras on the bike rack. I know that for a fact. Um, so we'll see. Uh, rocks are going to have to work real hard to hold on to last plays. Oh, my God. Too funny. Uh, we go with Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. DMAX new bike fund. Very generous. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Let me go up to the top then as we get to the comments on the bottom. And I appreciate all you guys. Whoops. Oh, come on now. Okay. Good morning, DMAX. Sounding better. Oh, physically. <coughs> so you say something, I'm going to cough. But physically, yeah, I'm feeling way better. You know, I still got a little, just a little something left. Not much, though. Good morning, DMAC. Are you going to have Mosher's wife paint you like she did Vic? I think I'd need to lose. I mean, I'm down close to 40 pounds. I think I'd need to lose another 15 to model in front of uh, Bear. I have no idea which quarterback the Broncos may draft, but I'm fascinated to find out which quarterback Sean Payton loves. Well, we are certainly getting closer. Georgia. All right. About last night, I'm coaching my eight year old daughter's flag football team, and we lost 36 to 12. If this keeps up, James Marilad is going to call me Teflon Kev. I've heard parents calling for your head, Kevin. I think they're crazy. Good morning. What are the minimum amount of games the Nuggets can lose and still make the playoffs? Because whoever needs the rest, just take the rest of the season off, get healthy at all costs. And in, that's a great question because they actually clinched a playoff berth. So they could lose all seven games and still make the playoffs. They clinched the playoffs yesterday with the win. You know, Andon was super pumped for his boy, Colin Gillespie's monster dunk. Is that right? Okay. Georgiev, since the All-Star game, has had to allow three goals before becoming a brick wall. Um, yeah, it's frustrating. I get it. Yeah, still celebrating with Gillespie's mom out here on Gillespie Island. Uh, that's funny. All right. Oh, Edward, thank you, brother. That's that's very that's very nice. Um, also rolled tied team made the college football playoff in final four Bama. That's it, man. Wade cotton. I don't know if, it's, if there's a more Alabama name than Wade cotton. Thank you everybody for your contributions. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for participating with, uh, Ed Prather at edprather.com. The number one most trusted real estate team in Colorado, Ed and his team. And boy, it's a team, Ed, Dominic Miller, Ashley, Abby, Andrea, Blaze. Um, oh, we had a couple of contractor guys come over over the weekend. We got a new roof put on. Um, thank you for all your hard work. Um, Many kind comments. Look at you. Incredible with the donations. Okay. You're choking me up a little bit. Uh, you guys are great. It makes doing this so rewarding. And it makes me um, motivated to keep on plugging away. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Avalanche tonight against Columbus. We'll talk football, NFL with Nate and Chad. Coming up, there's a fascinating article by Mike Kliss about what's gone out and what's come in. And the numbers are staggering if you really want to understand the impact of this Russell Wilson deal. It's crazy. Okay, we'll talk to you at 9 o'clock with Chocolate Pain with Nate and Chad. Um, then noon to three on with uh, Tyler and Scott. That should be a blast today. Rockies play at noon. Avalanche play at five. I'll be out at Avid Caddy starting at 430. Would love to see you out at Avid Caddy. That'd be great. You know, come by when I'm there. Play golf. Have fun. Um, and the two sponsors that we have right now are Ed Prather and Avid Caddy. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. 
And thank you also uh, to my great friends at Trek for being so kind and generous. And um, got to get that going. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you at 9 o'clock.